allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain for a moment of silence for Mary Ball, mother of Libby Swetland, the high school administrative assistant. Jennifer Anderson Lee, the high school school nurse. Rolls Palermo, mother to Amory Sargent, former mm -hmm. middle school principal. Bernice Gavin Gogan, mother of Cindy McNally. Mary Seed, mother of Bob Seed, Clinton Middle School assistant principal. And Cecile Desmontopoulos, former secretary for Clinton High School. Thank you. School Committee meeting for Monday, August 21st, 2023. I have a motion to approve the bills. So, so moved. I'll second. second. Any discussion? And none. All in favor? Unanimous. I have a motion to approve the minutes from July 24th, 2023. So moved, Mr. Chairman. I'll second. Any discussion? And none. All in favor? Thank you. Any public comment? And then from the CTA. Hi, Robin. Hi. 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 Um, I was just reminded as, as we had a moment of silence for that many people from our, our family that we truly are a family because um, I sent out to the CTA uh, the message that Anne-Marie Sargent's mom had died. And there was a very good showing at the calling hours. Um, she was impressed. So, um, but on looking toward the other end of the spectrum, um, there will be an email going out tonight to our new hirees um, from me welcoming them. And uh, CTA will have our e board meeting Wednesday morning um, to plan for the year. And then we will provide lunch for the new teachers. Great. So both ends of the spectrum. Please extend our welcome as well. I will. I will. Enjoy your last weekend off. Have a good week. Thank you. Have a good year. Thanks. Your PTA. Do you want me to pull another chair up for you? Yeah. I'm okay. All right. She's like, no, you got it. She goes, you got it. You got it. No problem. Hi, hey, I'm Rebecca. Becky Tallis. I'm the new PTA president. Um, my cohort, Emily Cabrera, is the vice president. And the other member of our board uh, for the school year 2023-2024 is Melissa Colleton. Um, she's our treasurer. Um, so we have a little bit of a list of things because it's been a busy summer. We did not take the summer off. Um, we um, have the coffee cabin coming for opening day for the faculty and staff. Um, that is a PTA sponsored event for the uh, faculty to get beverage and snack as they enter the school um, on us. Uh, it's kind of to kick off the year in the right spirit. Um, we will also be attending the opening houses for CMS and CES. Um, uh, and CHS once we get the information for them um, to share information about PTA. Um, we have uh, confirmed our fall bingo night which is set for October 1st at Turner's Hall so we will have the PTA sponsored bingo night. Um, we are planning this in partnership with Parks and Rec to do a drop-off child watch for children five and up for those who are PTA members so you'll be able to drop your child off and receive child care for the entire time of the event come attend the event at Turner's and then go pick up your kid um, we are working on sponsorship for that child care to also provide food snacks and a craft and everything for the kids while they are at Parks and Rec so it's structured um, so the parents can have a little bit of an afternoon date um, we as a board are finalizing our budget and calendar for upcoming school year um, we've been working on creating our online store, membership, and donations. We have over 210 people that have signed up to receive our newsletter. We actually just sent out our first newsletter. 
Um, we've been scamming everybody on Facebook, so you're welcome. <laughs> um, our first one, like I said, it went out August 18th, and we've had a 90% open rate, which is fantastic, and we thank everybody so much. Um, and if you haven't clicked, please do. <laughs> um, we also um, kicked off our Mabel's Labels fundraiser. It's open and will be ongoing throughout the school year. There is no end date, so as parents need things to label their children's uh, items that get lost in the lost and found and can be easily found with a label, um, save the school some hassle of tracking people down. Um, take advantage of that. And then we have our first meeting coming up on uh, Thursday, September 7th at 6 at the elementary school. More information to be coming as we lock down the building um, authorization for the request that we submitted. Um, but we are also working with Parks and Rec to provide child care during our meetings. So we have it coordinated so that we will have the meeting in one place and the child care with Parks and Rec will be offered in a separate so parents can actually have that less of a burden on them. So all the things are going on and we still got a lot of moving parts and we're excited for the year. Yeah, great job on Facebook, by the way, because um, <laughs> as you guys were transitioning, I mean, just a lot of great information, right? Introducing yourselves, letting you know, what, letting us know what's coming. So I'd say from a visibility perspective, you guys are off to a great start. That's so, Ms. Well done. Cabrera. She's our social media guru and making sure we're trying to be fully transparent and make sure everybody knows what's going on because it's a community for the kids and that's what we're here to do. Great job. So we appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Becky. We appreciate it. Uh, if you didn't, you should grab, if you want to grab one of the copies, paper copies of the packet, because the open houses are in there. Awesome. And I actually think one of them, the high school, is on September 7th from 6 to 8, so <laughs> it might conflict with your meeting, but that might be something that's... Uh, <laughs> right, move to high school, <laughs> go to 5, whatever you got to do, yeah. yeah. Uh, we also have um, flyers for you guys, for um, faculty and staff who want to become uh, PTA membership. It's a coupon, discount on membership. <laughs> Great. Great. Thank you. Let me get the seat pack. All right. So staffing updates. Uh, so since our last meeting, we've had uh, five resignations. Uh, Ingrid Brusso, who is a CES ESL teacher, uh, resigned. And then we had uh, four instructional assistants. Um, Kathleen Connor, Sherry Ramstrom, Nicholas Cefalo and William Flumerfelt all resigned. Uh, one was from the elementary school, three were from the middle school. Uh, as far as new hires, uh, we have six new hires since last meeting. Uh, William Gosselin was hired as a CHS IA. Angela Alcorn was hired as the CHS preschool IA. Uh, Michelle Austin was hired as an EL teacher at the middle school. Uh, Yohoraini Carrasco was hired as a middle school instructional assistant. Elizabeth Mundy was hired as a grade 7 math teacher. And Meg Favoli was hired as a speech language uh, pathologist at the elementary school. So we are pretty close to being fully staffed. There's a few positions that we might need to round out as we, get, as we see all the needs and everyone returns. I'd say the one major one I think we're still working on filling right now is the middle school science position for grade seven and eight there. So that's the one that we're working on r right now. Uh, we did, we've made a couple attempts to offer to candidates and just hasn't quite worked out. So we'll, we'll but we've got a week, we'll figure it out. Um, so just for the opening of school, um, there is a sort of a school year at a glance. We put this together last year just to kind of help us wrap our head around everything. Um, so Wednesday the 30th, uh, so actually Monday the 28th, the teachers will be back. Uh, IAs will be in on Monday. Tuesday it'll be just the teachers. And then Wednesday, the students grades one through 12 will come in. And then uh, Tuesday the 5th uh, is the first day for pre-K and K. Um, we're using kind of infinite campus still, so bear second year for infinite campus with the parents, but we're actually migrating all our staff information to infinite campus this year. Last year we were kind of in two systems. Uh, we're going to be doing all our staff attendance and everything through infinite campus this year. Um, we tried to put sort of our start times and evening events together in this packet um, so you can see some of them. Some are still TBD, but we're trying to get them out as quick as early as we can. Um, the freshman orientation will actually be held on the 28th, basically right at the end of the day, 2.30 to 
um, and then we'll, I think the uh, high school has the first open house September 7th, uh, and the middle school actually is running theirs so September 7th as well. So they're doing both on the same night. We're staggering those times a little bit. And then the uh, elementary school, I think, has theirs later, uh, the 14th, is for one through four. And then pre-K and K actually will be coming in uh, August 31st. So. Uh, that's pretty much where we are. I think we're we're pretty good. We'll be updating on a couple other things as we go through the night. Um, the goals, so we've been working with Commonwealth Consulting to kind of figure out our goals. And what we wanted to try to do is we looked at and said, you know, uh, there's a lot of different things. And we go to, you know, we went to the State Leadership Institute and we've done stuff with our uh, Commonwealth Consulting. But really, everything we're doing is towards one kind of overarching goal. And that's to continue to build this multi-tiered system of support, which is really one of the things that the, the state wraps everything around, which is really being proactive in trying to make sure that we're looking at student data and providing the supports to try to get all students to succeed. And, and part of that, too, is removing barriers for all students to succeed. So we said that's really the overarching goal. We don't want it to feel like to teachers that we're trying to like add on all these initiatives. It's just it's one thing. It's one goal. And it's just there's little pieces to, 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 to try to refine to make that goal work. Uh, so the first one we're looking at is access to grade level material. That was a big one. Um, basically, you know, the state presented a lot of research at their institute for us, basically saying that, um, you know, if, you, if, if students have access, held to high expectations, receiving grade level instruction, using high quality instructional materials, they're going to show growth. So what they're saying is you really want to focus on what they would say, focus on more acceleration of learning, not remediation. So you don't want to sort of say, oh, you know, these kids have been through a lot, so we're going to kind of, I'm going to kind of back, you know, dumb it down a little bit, and we're going to cover some of these things they might have missed. And it's like, that's not really doing anyone, what the research has shown is that it's not doing anyone any favors. Like, if you're teaching fifth grade, you need to teach a fifth grade standard. Now, Part of our job is to then look at the data and say, okay, well, is this person have a gap? And then how do we provide an intervention to fill that gap? But we don't want to hold back an entire class or everybody by, by lowering the expectations. Uh, removing barriers, a lot of this is talking about the universal design for learning, um, doing things like co-teaching where we might do some push-in so that you know English learners and special education students are able to stay in the classroom and, and benefit from tier one instruction as opposed to getting pulled out for very similar instruction. Um, and then individual support. So basically, when we look at that assessment data, what are we doing about it? Are we providing interventions? Are we providing interventions in the classroom? Are they different pull-out classroom uh, interventions during like a wind block? So all of this should sound familiar. They're all things we've been doing for the last like three years in different buckets, um, but we're just trying to sort of continue to refine them and work on them. And, and we've done a lot of work at the building level over the summer, uh, I think, to really try to take what has been Primarily, I'd say developed at the elementary school and, and this being continued to expand and refine at the elementary school and really start moving it into the middle school and also the high school. Um, the, oh, and my personal goals, I will get you my personal goals. I'm working on a draft of those, but I want, I'm just trying to wait until we get the accountability uh, data so that if there's an area that I need to focus on, I can address that. Um, but I have drafts ready to go for probably sometime in September. Um, the uh, handbooks is next thing on the agenda. Um, so the main one that you have to approve is the high school agenda. There is a little a high school handbook, excuse me. There is a uh, minor, um, the two major, the two changes uh, are highlighted in your packet. That uh, page 29, there was some changes to special education re regarding voluntary withdrawal and suspension. There was an addition based on the uh, the new law. Um, that well, it's a tweak of the law, I guess. But they, the one of the laws was saying that we have to basically make sure we're considering. Uh, alternatives to suspension before suspending if it's like a non-drug, non-violence related suspension. So we kind of replaced with the paragraph that sort of said we would, we would try to do that with the legal term for it. That legal, that legal language is in, in all three handbooks. We just didn't really put them all in. 
Um, the middle school handbook, I know that there was a couple, I think there was one sort of formatting thing that was brought to our attention and one sort of, uh, I'll call it a copy and paste error that was in there. And so we'll fix those before we uh, send them all out, but they don't change anything. Um, substantially to the to the handbook the way it's written so it was more of just uh, editing type things um, so for the most part they're pretty much the same as last year just sort of you know read through and and those changes so uh, we have to approve the the high school one if you want to endorse or approve the other ones that's that's a bonus Mr. chairman i move that we accept the 2023-2024 student parent handbook for clinton high school i'll second that Further discussion? All in favor? Mr. Chairman, I further move that we show our support for the middle school and elementary school handbooks as well. I will second that as well. Any discussion on that? None. All in favor? All right. Thank you. Um, middle school project MSBA update. Um, so there's always something going on with this behind the scenes, even if it's not. We do have a building committee meeting um, tomorrow uh, at 6.30. That's a virtual meeting. Um, on August 2nd, there was the preferred schematic. Uh, the, the preferred schematic was presented to the MSBA Facilities Assessment Subcommittee. So uh, it was a PowerPoint presentation that we had to give to the, uh, to the MSBA. Um, they asked some nice questions. Uh, they asked, it's funny how you never know what people are going to ask about and of like a, all the of all the stuff that's gone into building design so far <coughs> they probably asked three questions about the size of the parking lot really? and it was like like I, I don't know we'll get there when we get there like it's just a parking lot drawn in like <laughs> so I'm like well maybe if you're gonna have that big you should have some islands of trees and it's like yeah okay we're, we're really focused on the building right now <laughs> so if they uh, want to give us a little more money for yeah. that we'd be happy to do it <laughs> So, but for the most part, it was uh, it was a very positive meeting. It was well received. Um, we didn't really get any. There was no concerns raised. Like I said, it was more of just sort of, you know, if, if that if the biggest question is looking at your parking lot, I think you're you're, you're doing all right. Yeah. Um, the on August eighth, there was a meeting held with uh, facilities department facilities director and some of the other. Uh, I know Bob Seed was on it, and the um, were any of the head custodians on that meeting? I think we invited them, but they couldn't make it. Right. Uh, but really, we were looking at the building management system design parameters. So what they're trying to look at is when they start building the, the uh, start really, now that we have a preferred schematic, you're really starting to build it out, right? So you're really going to start putting all the systems in there and start putting costs in and all that kind of stuff. So this particular one was on the building management system. And a lot of what they wanted to know is like some places might, you know, I think Worcester was an example that might, they might have like their own proprietary system because they're so big, they had someone come in and just do it for them, right? So it's like if you're saying, well, what are we using for a building management system? Well, you're going to use ours, right? Um, for us, we don't have that situation. So they might recommend probably going with one that's not a proprietary system so that you could have different vendors operate on it or different people bring in parts. So, just different things like that. What do we want to be able to control? What do we not want to be? What are we worried about controlling or not worried about controlling? So it was a good, uh, it was a good meeting. It's uh, you know I, you learn a little bit I think at each of these meetings, and, and there's still a long way to go for that. Uh, like I said, we've got the building committee meeting um, tomorrow at 6:30. We're also looking at these sort of room data sheets. Um, I'm working on these meeting uh, meeting schedule where. Uh, we'll try to be meeting with groups similar to what we did, similar to what we did last year, maybe where it was like we might, they might have met with the uh, physical education teachers and said, what, "What is it you'd like to see in a gym?" Now it's going to be like, "Okay, well here's sort of our schematic of the gym." Now it's going to get to like, "Which way would this would you like this closet door to open?" Or where would you like a whiteboard? Or where would you where do you think you need electricity? You know, like that kind of stuff. And like I said, it's not all going to, just like the other one before, it's not like everything people say it's just going to be built, but it's just trying to get, make sure that when they're designing a room, we don't want to design a room and all of a sudden everyone walks in and says, why is the, you know, why is the whiteboard on the wide wall? I need it on the narrow wall, right? So uh, we want to make sure we're getting that type of, type of feedback. Um, and then I just, I know on October 25th, uh, the Clinton Chamber of Commerce has asked me to, to speak. 
uh, at their annual meeting, um, basically kind of regarding the middle school project and give an update on, on where we are and sort of talk about, you know, what, what sort of the economic benefits could be or, or what the economic impacts are. So, um, so that's sort of where we are right now. I think the big ones are, you know, they're really starting to now kind of drill down a little bit and we'll get, we'll get the next layer of where they are at the meeting tomorrow. Steve, are they keeping like extensibility in mind for like any type of future? Like, I mean, this building has to last 50 years, so to speak. So, I think as we start thinking about how we're going to heat the place or how we're going to cool the place or, you know, what utilities are going to look like, that, you know, regardless of, you know, this setup might be the cheapest. However, this setup gives us extensibility that says if laws are going to come down the, the path that are going to say you can't do this anymore, that we're not going to be looking at some crazy cost to then transition to something else versus bolting on to what they're going to build into the building right. itself. I'm so, sure they have recommendations based upon what they've designed recently. So what's funny is the MSBA, and I'm sure they'll talk more about this at the meeting tomorrow night, but the MSBA just recently changed their energy code to get energy reimbursement points, right? And now you have to, you kind of have to build to their eligibility code, to their energy code, which is essentially the, I think it's the state's stretch code, essentially is now like the minimum for a new school building, something along those lines. I'm not, I'm not well versed in codes, but sure. something like that. And essentially, what they're saying is that it almost appears that the only way you're really going to meet that code is if your primary source of everything is electrical. So, electric heat, electric cooling, all that kind of stuff. So, heat pumps, uh, those types of things. Um, they're basically, and now they're saying that even if you are going to put, so this is kind of to your point. Even if you are going to put, like, if you said, well, no, we, we don't want to give up on natural gas yet. We want a natural gas boiler. They're going to make you still wire it. For the transition. So there. that if you make a transition, you have to do that, right? Okay. So then that's what it says. It's like now it becomes, is that more of a cost or less of a cost? Or is that just, you know, and then you got to look at, is it cheaper to, to do, uh, you know, is it cheaper, is it, is it a wiser investment to, like, yeah, we will stick with the uh, natural gas, and then, but we're, we know we're ready to switch, or do we want to switch right now? And then there's another layer on that, which is the uh, which one is it? The, the recent one, the Inflation Reduction Act, and and Mass Save, and all these things. So the other thing is now there's another layer. So normally you're working on MSBA reimbursement, but now if you're going with electrification, or if you're going with some of these other uh, you know, insulation value or you know, energy metrics, you can actually qualify maybe for reimbursement on, on those extra costs through these other revenue sure. sources. So, there's a lot that they're looking into. It actually is it's a big thing because the MSBA literally just changed the code. Um, I guess the only good thing is you can get more in reimbursement from the code, sure, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. It might just offset increased costs to meet the code. Right. So. Well, it's good that they're talking about it because yeah. I mean that's important, right? Yeah. I mean you, you don't want to build a school for today. We're building a school for a lot of tomorrows. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. But speaking of the schools we have today for a facilities update, <laughs> uh, we have our facilities director uh, Brian Farragher here today. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So um, all right. I know this is long, so. Everyone has a packet, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I'll just I'll keep it general. I'll, I'll try and highlight the uh, kind of the big big ticket uh, articles and status updates on those. Um, but first, I just want to we had seven summer interns this year, and they did a fantastic job. Many of them are done this week. Uh, we had three Clinton High students uh, that worked with us throughout the summer. They shared sports today, but they did a fantastic job stepping in with our regular staff and uh, making sure the schools are. Uh, where they need to be for the when uh, for the first day of school. So I just want to thank them and, and, and all our staff because they they've worked really hard this summer. Um, just some updates. So the fiscal year 23 articles. So we have they're already approved. Um, the high school lighting auditorium, the chiller and HVAC, and the portable generator. I'll just give quick updates. So for, as as far as the high school auditorium lighting and sound. Um, we went through several meetings, um, different vendors, uh, approved the vendor, and then we're waiting for the electrical contractor. So we received three different quotes from three different companies on that aspect of the project, and we, we narrowed it down to 
to um, who, who we're going to go with. Um, right now, it's it's just coordinating what materials coming in. Um, looks like, and I spoke with Mr. Cermak, um, it looks like mid-October everything will be in. I did speak with the electrician, and that fits their timeline. They, everything that they need should be available. Um, we're looking for like two to three weeks of completely shutting down the auditorium. Um, and that was the window we were given um, with not too many events or anything. Things can be rearranged uh, during that time period to get this project done. Um, so right now we're just pretty much at the installation phase and, and just pin, pinpointing a date. Um, chiller and HVAC, I'm waiting on a, I reached out to an engineer that kind of writes specs for a project like this because we don't have any in-house uh, subject, subject matter, matter experts on this. So. The intent is to have specs for the installation and also oversight of the install from an engineering firm. Um, but I'm waiting for a price on what those services would cost and if that would impact actually the actual um, equipment to, you know, if we still have enough funding in that article with getting the engineer involved and then also um, procuring the. Um, chiller and then the installation phase so once I have that we'll be able to kind of because it, it will have to go out to bid and part of this engineers uh, responsibility is to write the specs so when we do put it out to bid we're getting exactly what we want um, so right now Brian are we functional with the elementary we school? are yes yep I was just gonna ask what school it was it's yeah. for the Clinton elementary school Perfect. Um, we're trying to be as proactive as we can, um, but there's even the lead time on some of the, this equipment is it's getting better. But we're trying to start the process so we at least have the specs and we can send it out to bid, and then we'll see where we lie as far sure. as how, how long um, it takes to kind of get it get it scheduled. It would most likely be a summer project because it will be invasive. There will be a crane down there removing the old one and all that, so we don't want to do it during sure. school hours. So um, scheduling will be, you know. Once we pinpoint what we need to do, the next aspect would be when, when can we schedule it. And the portable generator, um, working with the town administrator, um, he's looking at a few different av procurement avenues. Um, I did get a couple quotes, but we just want to make sure we're good to go to kind of move forward and we're not skipping any steps. At the moment, uh, the rental that's currently at the middle school is, um, that rental fee is coming out of this warrant article. so. It, it's we're okay with that. Uh, we just haven't purchased the the, the actual unit yet. Um, so that's that's kind of past articles where we are. As you can see, things take time. Um, fiscal year 24, we did everything was approved at town meeting um, with your support, the select board and finance committee. So thank you for that. Um, we're in the initial stages since the money was just allocated June 1st. Um, of looking at, so we have the new mower, we have the uh, uh, facility structure that we discussed, um, but we still need to finalize measurements and, and work with the building um, inspector to make sure we're not too close to the power lines and everything is is, is good, good to go when we, when we do start. Um, within that 180,000 is also written in that article is um, upgrades to the athletic complex in general, so anything above the cost of that garage we can look to to kind of put that money to good use. Um, one area that has been a, kind of a hot ticket right now is the tennis courts. Um, so all I have good pricing on some temporary repairs that I could buy maybe in. So repairs of the cracks and then repainting the entire, all four uh, courts. We're looking at close to like $45,000. If we did the whole thing over, we're looking at fifty to 60000 per court. So that's a mm -hmm. bigger bigger project sure. um, with the avenue we're looking there's they're saying that we potentially could get another eight to ten years of you know but yes. that's new cracks might form because of the asphalt we don't know but they're saying that um, they can resurface that and, and buy us another you know eight to ten years they're saying so I think that's the you know right now is the best best yep. way to attack it um, you paint that you know, I drop it to you offline. Are you gonna paint a couple of courts for that other game?
the uh, pickleball. Yeah. Yeah. Think so, out of the game. <laughs> so, no, we, I don't know if it's yeah. the same. We talked about this. Like, we so, we're, we got a pickleball team? I guess. Let's do it. That's another hot I'll ticket. Coach, in <laughs> big ticket item in town. We did put a temporary one. We, we got, I went on Amazon and got pickleball tape. It's regular tape. <laughs> but we put one on the middle court outside of the middle school. The parking rack has a net that you can rent. So, if any residents want to go down and there is an area that's regulation, and they can, nope. they can use that area um, for now. It's definitely um, all the hype. Yeah. So, um, and then the paving, I'm waiting on two different contractors. This this one was we weren't able to get it done this summer like we thought um, or we hoped. Um, now it's with school coming back, it's going to be a little bit of a tight window. So there's going to have to be more communication or more discussion with the actual contractors when they get back to me. As to how long it will take, do we need to shut the entire parking lot down? Can we do it on a weekend? And then it'll be coordinating with the staff. And, and, and how late can they pave till Brian? Like, I mean, at some point they probably pull the plug on paving, I, right? Whether yeah, it's I would say. Otherwise, probably frost or something? Yeah, I would say probably early November ish okay. around there, maybe a little later. Does that kick this project out of the window to not have it done till the spring, or do you think there's a chance we could still have it done between now and November? And if it's okay if it's unknown. It, it, all, it all depends on the. The schedules yeah. of yeah. Uh, I think I think it all depends yeah. on their answer as far right. as are they saying no problem we can come grind it up in one day pave right. it the next right. day sure. you give us a Saturday yeah. Sunday we'll get it done or is right. this, are they going to say it's two and a half weeks to get it all done right, right. I mean that's going to yeah. be the the so difference. Those are the questions when when it, they do contact me back we're, we'll try and sure. pinpoint what we can and can't do and is it feasible to get it done this fall. Fair. Um, just an overall updates on the schools. Um, all three schools are in very good shape. We stripped wax all the floors, classrooms, hallways. Um, the middle school and high school gym floors were re resurfaced, um, which is something we like to do annually just to they get all the wear and tear, make sure it's good for uh, gym classes when they start and basketball when, when that starts as well. So um, the elementary school we will get to, but it won't be before school starts. Um, we were a little delayed with all the um, programs down there this year, mm -hmm. which is fine. We're, we're in good shape now. We actually brought the middle school staff down for a day and a half to kind of assist them once things opened up a little bit, and um, they'll be they'll be ready to ready to go for uh, the thirtieth. Um, are we gonna do? I forget where we are. Are you guys gonna do? Do you wanna do tours again, like you yeah, typically do? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna pr bring that up before I left. This. Yeah. However you guys want to do it, I'll make myself available, and um, whatever you decide, you can reach out to me individually or yeah, which as a group. Which or, everybody prefer, just go through Bri or? Well, do you, do do you want to at least determine what, who's doing what right now, and then we can have work through, okay. like, Brian Kelly to figure out a schedule, probably? Sure. So you got um, three schools, the central office, and the grounds. Right. Pam, what do you want? Middle school. Central office. Oh, it's a good high school. It's fun. Which one did you? High school is fun. Uh, middle school, central office, high school, Joe. I've had all of them at this point. So <laughs> I'd rather have you choose and just leave me with Mr. Chair. No, I'd rather have you. I'll go the elementary school. All right. And that leaves me. Grounds. Because I see Casey every day. Excellent. You don't want to. <laughs> Casey doesn't want to see me. Yeah, right. Excellent. I'll go, during, I'll go during lunchtime. All right, so we have those, so maybe we can try to just start a little email with that so you guys can try to coordinate what works best. Perfect. Yep. Um, other than that, the, a lot of details and, and painting, new carpets, you'll, you'll see new, new flooring, some of the classrooms. Um, we can, we can a lot of stuff yeah, they'll see during the tour. They and can we see can... during the tour. We, we added more water bottle filling stations at all the schools. Um, Two at the elementary, they didn't have any. Um, another one in the main hall at the middle school, and I think we put three more in the high school. They seem to, to like those. So. Brian, do you still have a separate line item in your budget that's dedicated just to fencing that I know we've had in the past? And the only reason no, I ask it would, is I'm, it I'm would thinking, be under repairs. Okay. Yeah. And the only reason I'm asking is I'm thinking more of the high school baseball fence. Yeah. Like last year, I think it's, it's starting to curl up toward the bottom. So, you know, that just from a safety issue perspective, just with kids tracking down fly balls, you get a kid trip. You know the thing peeling up to the 
kind of. I mean, they're, it's, it's fencing. I, mean, it's, I think it's, what we used yeah. to have was a we had a warrant article that had some fencing. Is that what we it was? Sending yeah. down, yeah. And, then and by the way, we, you've done we, a ton of work, work on the fencing, so I'm super appreciative. That's the only reason I bring it up because it's one of the only places I see fencing that yeah. needs to be dealt with at this point up on these um, grounds because the outfield fence is starting to peel. Yeah, we're going to look. So. We'll we'll kind of walk the the field, cool. and, and I know the the dugouts at the softball field. They're safe, but they're yeah, kind sure. of an eyesore. So we're, we're looking to maybe do some improvements there before the spring cool. season. And um, we did the softball field uh, similar to we resurfaced the softball field. Uh, I want to say a few weeks back. Yeah, the fields are great. Uh, similar to what we did to the, the boys' varsity field mm -hmm. last year. So uh, we're slowly getting there. With and the field played great all season. So. It was awesome. So good stuff. Very really good. Um, yeah, other than that, if there's any specific questions. Um, I know um, it's sort of like a blend between athletics and facilities, but we did order the uh, new scoreboard, oh, too, for right. the high school gymnasium. Uh, we're hoping to have that installed prior to basketball season. It looks like they said yeah. they can do it. Um, we want to see, because that's one of those things, it's like you either make it by basketball season or don't take it down. You wait, because yeah. we're not going to do yeah. basketball with, no, with nothing. Yeah. Um, but the goal is to have it so that the... It's really those panels on the side that are becoming sort of the dangerous part of that scoreboard, and then it's just all outdated now with the system of how you can do it. And then the uh, we did put in an order to try to get a um, another uh, portable scoreboard. They now make like electric portable scoreboards that you can take out. And the thought would be, you know, if we're having any varsity games on like the where the field hockey sometimes plays, or if we have to have a varsity soccer. game on yep. the soccer field or something yep. like that. Kind of use that that as we can. Yeah, so that, that, that should shipped. be. Yeah, that should yeah. be in uh, this week. I want to yeah. say. Okay. Um, and then the scoreboard for the for the gymnasium. Ideally, we get it done before Thanksgiving. Is Dectronics handling that install too? Or are they handling the? I don't, I'm not sure. Um, okay. I, would, I think. I mean, I think the, the quote had the install included. I just don't know it, where. I mean, I'm assuming like we have electric there already for the existing yeah, one, right. so it shouldn't be like we need to hire an electrician yeah. to run it. So they, yeah. should, they should be able to it's, handle it. Yeah. To answer your question, yeah. my understanding is it's it's the material plus itself. Yeah. 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 No, that's fine. Yeah. We've ordered a lot of scoreboards through them in the last like five or ten years, so I would just say like don't be shy to keep your foot on them to say this needs to be installed by October <laughs> right. because yeah. that's what we asked you for and we paid you for it, so yeah. that's what we expect you to do. And I think they'll get fair it done enough. for you. They're they're, yeah. they're very fair about that. Yeah. Thank you for the thorough Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. All right, so the last, um, last thing here is JJIF and JJIFR. It's concussion policy. So every so many years, we have to um, basically do file with the state sort of that we have our concussion policy and everything and that we're doing all that stuff. Um, our, our current policies right now, the ones that are labeled in there as previous policy, JJIFA, and um, then there was a, was there a second one too? No, I think it was just JJIFA was what we had, right? And then, so what we're proposing is to eliminate the JJIFA and replace it with JJIF, which was following it, and then JJIFR. Those are basically, they're the model MASC policies. Okay. So what we're doing is we're, uh, we sent it to the lead nurse, she reviewed them, um, but basically it's just, it's just bringing it up to speed with what the MASC says is the, is the model policy so we can file it with the state. Okay. So. Well, I, I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we eliminate policy JJIFA and substitute it with the MASC model policies, JJIF and JJIF. Um, and I will second that. Any discussion on any part of it? Yeah, I will, Mr. Chairman, no. I will just say, having served on the policy subcommittee in the past, uh, this is the right move for us. The, the more we put protocols into what should be policy, the more we can get tripped up. Uh, so I, I'm a big fan of using the MASC policy drafts, changing them if we need to to suit our school district, but they've been vetted to a number of the sources, so I think it's in our best interest to be done. Anything else? Anyone in favor? Mm -hmm. hmm. All right. I'll hand it over to you, Mr. Chairman. All right.
I, so subcommittee assignments, uh, I dropped the ball on this. <laughs> I apologize. I did get your email back. I think we have about a month to add, and I did nothing on it. So uh, if you give me the, uh, the extension to our next meeting, I promise no. I'll, I'll uh, it's not the only thing I haven't done in a month. So. The one thing I did try to include in your packet, if you see there, I did make, I made a sheet, I think it, when I put the members, I think I just put the members who were from there last year. So okay. obviously this can change. Um, but then I put sort of recommendations. And what I was just trying to do is make some notes to myself as far as where are we on those sort of meetings. So if you're, if you're, if you're sitting there thinking, like, do I want to get on that committee or not on that committee, that might be something you can look at. Like that's some of the things that are coming down the road there. So, But I think uh, that's fine. Yeah, I, just, yeah, I, I, had when I, did, I read the email. And did <laughs> Yeah, we can we can wait and do that. I think our next meeting is September 11th. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Other than that, none of our committees have met. All right. And we're, once again, we're good on negotiations. Anything under old business? I'm sorry. Did, did I miss something? What we we'll, 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 we'll so, with this? I'm just checking over here. I know you had something that happened. Oh. In the next meeting. Oh, if anybody wants to make okay. some changes, we'll approve the, okay. the whole thing. We're just going to okay. assign you to a few committees. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got five. Give me good. All right. Anything under new business? You didn't lift it off? No. I don't think so. All right. Yeah. I was surprised. I'm, you know, it's it. Now you want me to talk? I'll talk. Yes. But yeah. it was—it's yeah. it's, just no. It's nice to see. I was—I was up. I was actually going around the track with my wife and kids on Saturday, and all of a sudden you could hear the whistles in the distance, and it's like so you drove up and you could see football practice mm -hmm. again, right? And then like even you come up tonight and you see how many people were here for cheerleading and football and the sports getting started, and it's just—it's just, it's just kind of nice to start seeing the. I mean, it's really nice to start seeing the kids come back. It's nice to see life again around here. It's a little scary sometimes when you think, oh, I got to get everything ready in a week, but that's, but it's, uh, but it's good. So, uh, this, you know, I'm excited for the school year to start, and we'll, one week from today we'll be kicking off. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> it seems like the older we get, the faster they come, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. I think I saw football players out there though in July, if I'm, if Shh, I'm correct. Not officially. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, better than the youth ones. Yeah. Uh, Let's spend oh, those yeah. captain's oh, okay. practices. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Can I have a motion to adjourn? You can. Second. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right.